Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hey, it's great to be back with everybody and our favorite love and connection coach, Michelle Fabrica. Hi. Michelle, good to see you. Good to see you both too. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Michelle, you've got, uh, and we know that you are a love and relationship coach and you have a uh, ongoing practice. You meet with people uh, both online and in person and uh, help a lot of people. Uh, and of course, you help a lot of people by coming on Celebrating Act Two and sharing uh, your insights for us. But I'm curious, what kind of a what kind of an issue has become common now? You know, things change. Uh, what what kind of issues are you dealing with in your practice? Obviously, I don't want you to spill the beans on any particular client, but right. you, you must see a, a certain commonality of of issues. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, one of the things that's that can be, you know, common is for a couple who's been together for a long time. And they can, it's not unusual, you know, for a couple to start going in different directions, you know, their interests are diverging and such. But some moms, there's sort of a, um, a willingness in one person that, to really want to grow and change and learn new things and try new things. Sometimes this happens around retirement, right? Maybe you're shifting years, whatever. And the other partner just wants to hang around and maybe watch a lot of TV and just like not do much. And so this is, can be a common, you know, midlife and beyond challenge, right? Where you just, you're kind of, you've had this life and now retirement happens, whatever. And suddenly you're in this new phase and um, it can be really challenging for, um, you know, mainly the person who's, wanting to go do things, right? The other person is like, well, I just want to relax. I just want to sit around and, and, and do my thing. So, you know, this is really one of those relationship crucibles, right? But this one of the amazing like things, though, is that we can count on that if you're feeling stuck, Michelle is going to talk to us about how we can unstick things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, that one of the things about this situation is that we think that we have to get our partner to change with us, right? I think that's a belief that a lot of us have. I know that I had that earlier in my relationship history. It's like, he's got to be doing this. Why is he doing that? We need to do that. I mean, anyway, I don't want to go there. But it's a common thing that we think that if we want to do this, we want to do it with our partner. So they have to do it with us, right? And and it it's not always the case, right? Oftentimes, there are many things that we can do on our own. But we have to first let go of this um, needing to control the other person or thinking that it has to go a certain way because basically there, there kind of ends up being two sides to a situation. So there's one person who's comfortable with the way things are. I'm good. I like the way things are. Nothing. I, what's the problem here, right? And the other partner is maybe climbing out of their skin with boredom or frustration or irritation or even judgment, right? And, um, and it's not a comfortable place to be in. But the key here is for that person, the one who's, you know, having the difficulty is just to really do some soul searching and get clear on what it is they really need and want. And um, this is something that can be doing, they can do on their own or they can do with a, you know, the support of a coach or like me or a counselor. You know, this is, can be a really joyful, fruitful thing to discover. Like what would they love? Or what's missing from their life? You know, what, what activities do they want to try? And the thing is to focus on what they want, not about how can I get my partner to do this or what are the things my partner might join me in. And it's just not that we're just saying, you know, who cares about my partner? I'm going to go do my own thing. But in a way, we're making sure that we're still attending to our own needs for our life. Right. We have we have options. We have options there. Hmm. So, you know, Michelle, this. This sounds familiar to me because I have, uh, of course, Art and I are both uh, past, quote, retirement age. Um, and I have a friend who bought a, a huge motor coach. I mean, a, one of the big ones, a bus, essentially. And mm -hmm. um, he and his wife, he and his wife have been traveling around the country um, and coming back and forth, visiting friends, doing all that, even during COVID. Um, they could go places and live in their motor coach and and visit friends who were safe, that kind of thing. 
Yeah. But what's interesting is I have another friend who loves to travel, wanted to travel. The wife wanted to travel and the husband didn't want to. Now, you know, his granddaddy's got a bad knee and all that stuff. But really, he just did not want to leave home. And she wanted to go. They're retired. They've got some money. Let's go to Hawaii. Let's go to the Bahamas. Let's go to, you know, she didn't ask him to go skiing with his bum knee. She just wants mm-hmm. to travel. Right, and right. He, he would have none of it. So yeah. it, it, I can see the, I can see what happens. And and you're right. It's maybe it happens. Does it happen a lot when people get retired that life changes? I, I think it can. I think it can. I think that one of the things that's tricky too is that the person who wants to, you know, go forth, let's say, can sometimes start to get resentful and judgmental of the partner who doesn't. And I think that is the seed of a lot of discontent that can just explode and it will fester first and then explode. And so uh, what I love helping that person who's frustrated focus on is to make sure, you know, we have responsibility for our own well-being and our happiness, our life trajectory, the things we want to learn. And we can do a lot of these things on our own, right? We, this, this friend you're talking about, for example, you know, she could go travel either on her own. She could find a friend to go with. She could find a group that she wants to go with, but she could still keep the, you know, and I, you know, I don't know the specifics, obviously I'm just commenting just from the detail you mentioned, but it's really important to continue to grow and thrive in the ways that you want to and stay more focused on what you can do and less about what your partner is doing. And it's not, you're not trying to do this, you know, to shame them or to make them feel bad or anything. You're just doing it for your own needs and you're still offering, you know, kindness and love to your partner. So it, it basically is kind of a way to, I'm going to do this anyway. I wish you'd join me, but I understand you don't want to. And who knows? At some point, it's like, wow, you know, you, you had so much. Oh, my God, let me see your photos. I'd like to go sometime with you. Or, you know, one part, you know, you've heard the story where, you know, somebody starts getting fit and all of a sudden they're really into it and they're getting all you know, feeling really attractive, extra attractive. And, and their partner's like, I'm going to start going to the gym with you. You know, like it can entice the other person to get on board. You know, as long as we just feel the other person might just feel a little stuck and just like, oh, I just want to relax. But, you know, we see our partner getting more alive, feeling more joy, and we want to join in. And so that can happen, right? As long as that's the impact of us just doing our thing. And that's what I want to invite people to really take, take charge of for themselves and spend less time on the judging, complaining, because it doesn't help either person, right? Hmm. Good, good advice. And, you know, obviously we're talking about something that it could stretch a relationship to the breaking point, right? Uh, This person who's out, you know, going to classes, traveling, you know, might could meet somebody, right? you know, there's risks here, right? They, they, maybe they want to explore some new things sexually and their partner isn't interested. Well, how do you handle that kind of a thing? Right. I mean, these are right. on, these are challenges, right? These might be something that the couple can resolve on their own, or they might need support from someone like me, you know, coach or counselor to like, how do we really tease apart? What's possible here? What, what agreements do we have? What, if you don't want to join me in this, well, this is important to me. You know, there's, there's, um, yeah, they're challenges, right? And um, it, but it needs attention because these these impulses are important to listen to, not to act on right away, but just to notice because it's part of how we uh, get to feel alive in life, you know, and um, have that vitality that we that we want. Well, it seems yeah. like the the, uh, the the real message of all of this is that if you're stuck, that's not a good place to be, and a there are ways to address getting unstuck and then, absolutely and that that's yeah. that everything falls apart but you know marjan for you uh woodworking for me and <laughs> everybody can have their own things and do their own thing so uh, right yeah great advice thank you yeah and just the key like i said is just to have compassion for Whatever your partner, whatever your partner wants to do at that moment, you know, it's like maybe they need some time to do to to just chill out and relax. And it's just, yeah, to catch yourself with the judgment because that doesn't, uh, it just it's toxic, right? It's really toxic to a relationship. 
Good advice, Michelle. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon. Yeah. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.